Hey professionals, Sophia Sarah Joseph here, author of Choreography of Awakening, international speaker, former Olympic figure skating coach, and founder and creator of Imagined Life, a revolutionary path to mastery of self that leads to towards creation of your masterpiece, the life you were born to live according to your life's blueprint. Welcome to Professionals and Aero Podcast, a podcast where we discuss how to walk talk, live, and grow authentically as a professional in the 21st century. It is my intention to bring you diverse and exciting speakers and prove that no matter where we come from and what we do, there are clear laws that work through us all that we can tap into to create what we desire. And today I have the pleasure and honor to introduce you to my amazing guest, Dr. Nelson Baltazar. And Dr. Nelson is a global motivational and educational speaker, an accomplished international best-selling author, certified life and executive business coach, physical therapist, and author of Accidentally, a global impactful blog. He holds a doctorate degree from the Cornerstone Christian University. And at the top of his career, Dr. Nelson met his adversity match that really introduced him to his true self. Stay tuned till the end, as Dr. Nelson and I will have free gifts for you. And today is our 29th of December, our last podcast before New Year, and so we are here to really make something special for you. Welcome, Dr. Nelson. Thank you so much for your generosity and gift of time and wisdom to share with us today. Oh, my gosh. Sophia, Sophia, thank you so much for that fantastic introduction. I just want to say thank you for taking a chance on me today because I know anybody could have been on this show, but you picked me. So to your audience, I just want to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. And chances are there's nothing new that you're going to hear me say today, but maybe Sophia and I will say it in a way that it will tickle your ears and today's conversation will be memorable. Thank you. Thank you so much. I already feel it. Like, do you feel it? the energy here that we're building? It's amazing. <laughs> Dr. Nelson, tell us about what exactly you do and how did you get started? Well, it's funny how life unfolds. You know, be, before I say anything, I need to let you and the entire planet know that me, Nelson Beltijar, is nothing but an imperfect soldier for Christ. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here today to share a few minutes with all of you. Now, what I do for a living, it's funny how, like I said, how life unfolds. I'm one of those guys that knows what it's like to, to climb that mountain of ambition to success, get to the top, enjoy the view for a while, only to come crashing down, crashing down, spiraling down, losing everything that I had ever worked for in a blink of an eye. I was a physical therapist that owned my own private practice that specialized in injury assessment, treatment, and rehabilitation. And then I'll never forget this. It was May 2016, and, and my staff and I were on the second floor of my studio loft celebrating, celebrating, clanging these champagne glasses because we had reached a monumental goal, a goal that we didn't think was possible. And we were on cloud nine celebrating. It was amazing. And then a week later, 168 hours from that joyous moment in time, my life changed. I was shockingly diagnosed with cancer. And I was forced to live in the hospital immediately for supervision, evaluation, and chemotherapy treatments. And, and to add salt to the wound, I even lost my ability to walk. And I became a prisoner of a wheelchair for the next three years. And the reason why I share this story with you is to remind all of you that adversity, adversity will attack you anytime it wants, regardless of your age, your gender, your status, or your religion. And when it comes, according to my grade three teacher, my grade three teacher, she told me, Nelson, one day when you face adversity and dance with adversity, there will only be two outcomes. Either you'll find a way to conquer it or you'll crumble beneath it. And I had no idea that that sentence that my grade three teacher gave me 
a long time ago would be the sentence that I would hang on to during the adversity of my life. But here I am today. I get to share a few minutes with you. There's more that I could tell you, but I, I'm a physical therapist. But because I went through this fire, I ended up changing careers. And I became a, a professional certified life and executive business coach. Why? I don't know why. I think it found me. <laughs> Ever since I was a kid, I've been nothing. These were the jobs that I had, Sophia. These were the jobs that I had. I would either work as a, a sport camp instructor, and then I would run my own sport camp, activity camp for mm -hmm. kids and youths. And then after that, I became a physical therapist, and I became a coach for adults who got injured, and it was my job to get them back to life. And then now I'm a certified life and executive business coach who specializes with youths and young adults, like age 14 to 34. And mm -hmm. it's my job to entertainingly bridge the gap between the awkwardness of uncertainty of adolescence on one end and hopefully personally productive adulthood on the other. And, and when I'm not doing that, I'm also a, a business coach for life, health, and wellness coaches. And it's my job to help them fill their calendars. Why? So they can develop and create an income with the vocation that they chose to believe and chose that they were born to do. I tell the world, man, Nelson, I just say, forget all the titles that I have. Throw them out the window. I am nothing but a coach. A coach's job is to help somebody get from their point A to their desired point B. That's all that I do. I honestly believe that the coaching profession was doing laps around the planet, trying to find somebody, got tired, and landed on my shoulder and said, okay, Nelson Beltajar, we're going to turn you into a coach. And that's how it started. And that's where I am today, and I'm okay with it. <laughs> you definitely sound okay with this. And I wanted to actually, can you please repeat, repeat that, those, those, those quotes again that your coach told you? Repeat them again. Okay. My grade three teacher. Oh, my gosh. And I'm going to tell you a story. My grade three teacher. See, here in Canada, as students, we are not allowed to chew gum in class. That's a big no-no. <laughs> in so Canada, does... not in Russia. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so the minute you tell Nelson not to do something, what does he decide to do? He puts gum in his mouth. Hopefully, the teacher won't catch him. The teacher catches me and says, Nelson, Mr. Beltajar, put that gum away. You know you can't do that. Spit it out. You are now going to have to stay inside. You are not allowed to go out for recess with your friends to play. That was my punishment. And the punishment was she gave me a sheet of paper and a pencil. And she said, write this down 20 times. And she wrote on the board, when it comes to adversity, there are only two outcomes conquer or crumble when it comes to adversity there are only two outcomes conquer or crumble when it comes to adversity there are only two outcomes conquer or crumble i had to write that out 20 times sophia 20 times as my punishment but it's so ironic because that is what i held on to when i had faced death and found a way to beat it how old were you then when you're in grade three, I think you are grade, you are eight years old. That's and interesting. So ten, so 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's really interesting how the source communicates with us when we're children. And like the message is being planted on your mind. And you may not pay attention to it for a long time. And then the moment comes and it's like, that is the message that was given to you for this time right now. Is that what I'm hearing? Absolutely, yes. That's so powerful. Thank you for sharing that. And I really, really hear how you've been around athletics all the time. So, and And I'm sure... It sounds to me that you became a physical therapist because you were an athlete to begin with. 
because so, I, I know how like how many I've been around athletics obviously my whole my whole life before and I know how many athletes become physical therapists athletic trainers to just stay connected to the sports so I'm not really at all surprised and love one of the things actually I was writing just the other day how life was like a game of cards right and you don't know what hand what what you're going to what cards you're going to get and sometimes you get really great cards but you can still have that boom that moment when you think everything is so amazing and some people may get bad cards and they think that's it i already lost the game i just started and i just got these cards that are horrible other people got better cards than i do but in what you're sharing it's just clear that it doesn't matter what cards you get you play the game of cards that you got in this moment and everyone has a chance no matter what am i hearing yes. that yes so wise so so wise and speaking of bad cards i haven't told you this yet but i had to live in five different hospitals during my cancer battle <clears throat> and my very very first cancer doctor let's call him dr k this was 2016 2017 my very first cancer doctor dr k gave up on me and told me and my family that i was terminal and that there was nothing they could do for me and that i was going to die and the best thing they could do was put me in the palliative care unit so that way i would be comfortable and pain free in my remaining days talk about dealing me bad cards but then i but then i was angry for maybe 5 minutes and then i promised myself if i am going to die if i'm going to die i'm going to do the best thing i can do for me and that's chase down one more undying goal i didn't know what it was yet but i promised myself that if i was going to die i was going to go out in a bang and at that time, at that time, I was lying in my bed. It was around 6 a.m. in the morning, tossing and turning, staring at the clock with a tear going down the right side of my cheek. And I realized what I wanted to do was I wanted to write a blog. <laughs> I know you're laughing, a blog, a blog titled thepositivedrip.com. But I didn't want to write it for vanity reasons. You see, I wanted to write this blog to to house my thoughts, my nuggets, the things that I learned with my time on this earth. Not just for me and not for vanity, because at that moment in time, I had a six-year-old nephew, a five and three-year-old niece, two brand new born twins, which I love dearly, but I knew that I wasn't gonna get a chance to see them grow up. And so I decided to write this blog and house all my nuggets of conversations that I know that I would have with them if I was able to stay on this planet. And I wrote that blog secretly, secretly I wrote that blog to leave it behind for them. So that way I could still, I could still be a part of their lives after I had passed away. But it looks like the joke's on me. <laughs> Cause if I fast forward to September, 2018, I'm going to let you know that I got rid of Dr. K. We left him in the rearview mirror, went to another hospital, got set up with another brand new set of medical doctor team, and they did everything they could to keep me alive. And one, on September 28th, 2018, that new medical team stamped me cancer-free and told me to go live my life. Ha, ha, ha. Amen. And two, this blog that has gotten us together, and has gotten me all this attention, which I left behind specifically for my younger family members, has accidentally trickled across the planet and developed the global readership, which was never, never, never the plan. And an online community is walking alongside it. I don't know how this happened, but my friends and family are, are telling me that it's probably because I invited the world to sit with me when I was feeling lost, alone, scared invisible insignificant terrified words that i never knew before words that i never knew before because in sport you're strong you're confident you're gonna make it happen there's no fear but for the first time in my life i was scared i was lost i felt invisible irrelevant insignificant 
unheard, unseen. And then I realized, you know what? If I could feel that way, there must be other people on the planet that do. And maybe that's why my blog has, has accidentally taken off and got me, the, got me all this attention. And here I am on camera sharing time with you. Truth is, this face, this face is not made for camera. It's a perfect face for radio. <laughs> this is a perfect face for camera, not radio. Because on radio, you cannot see what I see right now. <laughs> You're so sweet. It's, it's such a story. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yes, and you, you, you said it right. Talk about being dealt bad cards. But we have to play the hand we are dealt. 100%. And it, sounds, it really sounds like you had to choose to stay alive. It was up to you. And I love to hear that, that it doesn't matter what someone else says. You made that choice. If you didn't make that choice, if you didn't decide to make that difference and to do something of service, that probably what's the purpose of being here? Yes. Yes. And, and Sophia, I, I promised myself that I refused. I refused to let this trial and tribulation of mine be in vain. And I was going to share my story of vulnerability, struggle, challenge, and eventual victory. Because hopefully, hopefully there's one person out there that could relate to my story and see themselves in my story and say, hey, if this guy in Toronto, Canada could pull himself out of the hole and find a way to win, maybe there's a chance that, that they could too. And I will spend the rest of my days sharing this story with anyone who wants to listen. Thank you for being here. So, Nelson, Dr. Nelson, what does it mean to you being a professional? What does professionalism mean to you? For me, professionalism means stepping in to where you were born to be. And I honestly believe that the world is waiting for us to step into our greatness. We just have to be brave enough and patient enough to go get it. And at the same time, we need, we need to accept as a professional and as a human being that it's okay to not be okay sometimes. And it's okay to seek help when you know that you might have gone as far as you could go with the knowledge that you have. And, and I've always, always embraced that. Believe me. I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. I love being the guy who sits in the corner, is very quiet with a notepad and pen because <laughs> I love soaking up information of the people around me that have walked the journey before me, that have made the mistakes before me. So that way I'm gaining that wisdom. And more importantly, I won't be losing that time because I can fix it now. And as a professional, you have to know that Stepping into your greatness will make you feel you are never working a day in your life, although you'll be working 80 hours a week, but you'll be chasing the dream, living your vocation, waking up excited, going to sleep, wondering what am I going to do tomorrow? And as a professional, I always, I always went after help. And if I can just share one, sh one story, one personal story, remember how I told you that I lost my ability to walk? Yeah, and I was a prisoner of a wheelchair. I couldn't walk for about <clears throat> three and a half years. My 2018 was all spent in a rehabilitation center. Me as the patient. Me. Now me the patient. And I would get up and walk, fall down. Get up and walk, fall down. I got up, fell down so many times. But I always promised myself I was going to stand up. Why? Not for me. For every single person that trusted me as their therapist as their coach and as their inspirational friend, because now it was me that was in the arena and I had to perform for them. And that, that kept me going, that kept me going. And one of the things that I have been led to believe is that huh, 
my dad's picture is behind me. He passed away last Christmas, 2020. And he said, when you wake up every morning and go to work, believe that you are the answer to someone's prayer today. Mm. And, I, and I, I wake up every morning reminding myself that. And remember how I told you I couldn't walk for a while. Eventually, by January 3rd, 2021, I graduated from the wheelchair to a walker to two canes to one cane. And on January 3rd, 2021, I took my cane, put it in the closet, and I'm walking on my own as of then. But that's not the best part. That's not the best part. This is when I had to seek help from a friend. It was my goal to run by December 31st, 2021, to run. But my friend and accountability coach, her name is Andrea Mason from andreamasons.com. She teased me and said, why wait till December 31st? Aim for June 1st. I said, June 1st? That's six months in advance. Mm -hmm. And then she hung up. But because she dropped the message into my head, and because you're an athlete too, I said, why not? It's possible. So I secretly trained for it without anybody knowing. And then on June 1st, 2021, if you go to my YouTube channel, The Positive Jip, you will see that I run down the street six <laughs> months in advance of my forecasted, anticipated Ooh, celebration date. So as a professional, seek help. Seek, seek help. Refuse to be someone that, that knows everything because you don't. And, and do not be afraid to employ the help from other people that can help uplift and esteem you. And maybe you give you an idea which you might not have thought of in the first place. You know, it's what you're saying is just so much resonating with me that I would care I would carry on this phrase. If I did this, what else can I do? If I did this, what else can I do? And it was just like you're saying, like for me this was a mantra every day, like what else? What else? And just pushing that little, you know, just stepping just a little out of that comfort zone, just touch it, come back, touch it, come back, and then you're just out there. And it just happens. Yes. And when are you doing the marathon? Oh, uh, I, I didn't do the marathon. I ran down the street on oh, June no, on June you. 1st. I yes. heard you. Yes. Yeah. When am I doing the marathon? When are you oh, doing my that? God, Sophia! <laughs> 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 Woo! Oh my gosh, and this is on film. <laughs> <laughs> so this is accountability here right now. <laughs> wow and wow and wow and wow. I will let you know when I do the 3K, the 5K. Because every year, every year here in Toronto, around October, we have this annual cancer walk or annual cancer run or jog. And it's a big fundraiser. And then downtown... Everyone who participates, we either walk down the street or we jog down the street. So when that day comes, I will have your name on my shirt to <laughs> admire and attribute this happened because of her. <laughs> <laughs> and and there's, something, there's something I need to say. Now that you mentioned it, this blog that has gotten all this attention, I really can't take credit for. I can't because I was writing my very first blog sheet. I, I had finished writing it up, and I'm not a writer. I'm not a writer at all. I'm a private wait a person. Second, wait quiet. a second. You're not a writer. Are you writing the blog? Well, I'm writing. Yeah, I, yeah, I am. I am. But in my so mind, if you're writing a blog, then you're a writer. Okay, I'm a writer. So <laughs> I'm writing this blog, and it's my very, very first blog entry. And I'm terrified to to put it up into into the world. So remember how I said I had that six year old nephew. My six-year-old nephew at the time, his name is Austin, and I call him Awesome Austin. So Awesome Austin walked into the, the living room and saw that I was hemming and hawing and pondering. And a six-year-old asked me, Uncle Nelson, what's wrong? So I looked at him and I said, well, I'm having trouble uploading my blog sheet. So he looks at me through the eyes of a child and he goes, Uncle Nelson, it's easy. All you have to do is press the send button. So he took his six-year-old finger, leaned over my laptop, 
and Austin pressed the send button. He pressed it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, Austin, no. And in a blink of an eye, the positive <laughs> drip entered cyberspace. So, again, I can't even take credit, credit for things like this. But the world gave me friends and gave me people to help push me into the direction I needed to go. And, and I'm okay with that because I'm a firm believer <clears throat> that I am a product of every single friendship, relationship, familial ship, good or bad, that's ever come my way. And I did not get to where I am today all by myself. Yeah, I even was going to ask you a question. What is the... Um... What contributed, what has contributed to your success, luck, timing, a mentor, what you offer, what you do for business, but I already hear you, you so graciously calling on your coaches and your team, and people that supporting that supported you. Um, maybe you want to add something more to it. The, these are all, all the people that took a chance on me. That, that believed in me. And they didn't have to, but they did. And because they did, <laughs> Ira, and because they did, I refused to waste my remaining days on this planet to honor them. And that's what I'll keep doing. And I secretly believe that even though my dad has passed away, I work, I live every day believing that he's up there watching me. So how dare I slow down now? How dare I slow down now? And the clock is ticking. And the clock is ticking. And there is a purpose to fulfill. Yes, yes. Oh, sorry, Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there must be yeah, dust no. in my room. There must be a lot of dust in here. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for that. And, you know, you just reminded me when I was like 22, 23, and I was attending a conference for skating coaches. And there was a coach who was a world famous coach and you know you were kind of like a kid and you're looking up to these people and they're like oh, I want to be like you and and he came over to me and he, my name was Faye at that time and he said Faye the world will know you and it was like I can't you, you know exactly what this means and he said that to me. And I was holding on to those words through all the adversity. <laughs> like I knew I'm going to, there is going to be something that I'm going to make in the world because he said that. And it's like, you have to, that's like an accountability that you have to, you can't let that person down. You have to show them you can do this. And that's my wish for everyone who is watching to get the kind of mentor that you're looking up to and that you have trust in and you believe and that kind of reverence. And this person lets you know the world will know you. You are here because you are here to make something very special. Go do that. And I hope <laughs> you get that message from the two of us here today. I couldn't have said it any better. The, the crazy part is there are people on the other side of this camera right now. We all know New Year's is coming and we all know people make New Year's resolutions. There is something I know. I'm talking to you on the other side of the camera. There is something underneath your skin, in your heart that you've been wanting to try to do, but you haven't done it yet. And believe me, I know what that feels like. I know exactly how you feel. I felt the same way once. But I honestly believe that the world, the world has been waiting for someone foolish enough to believe in the impossible. So that way you can wrestle with and eventually defeat and crush adversity. 
and I'm talking to you on the other side of the camera, and I honestly believe that that person, that person is you. And there is no one other, right? There is no right. other you. It's you are the one of a kind. I mean, and every single one of us is contributing to this grand plan. And without you, this plan is not possible. Yes. And yes. Yes. And 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 if you're and if you have doubts, and if people have doubts, it's normal. We all have doubts. But find people. Find quality people that can surround that you can surround yourself with people that truly want to see you win and will help you win just the same way you would for them. And if you can do that, you'll be you'll be on the right path. As Sophia, I want to introduce you to my nephew, Austin. He just walked into the room. Come here. Come here. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Well, wait again. Hi. I've heard all about you. Now you're going to be famous. Everyone's going to know you too. If you were going to give some advice to some people, what would you want to tell them? Uh, never give up. Simply. Just never give up. That's a good one. Thank you. Thank you. I know some great person sitting right behind you who is probably contributing to some of the wisdom that you have. Although I know that you must be contributing to some of the wisdom he has. <laughs> <laughs> Were you the kid that pushed the button on the block? Yes. So you started this revolution. Mm -hmm. Can I give you five? <laughs> <laughs> So now I'm going to pass this on. The world will know you. So you're going to have to do something really magical mm -hmm. for the world. And I hope to grow up to see you do that. Okay? Okay. Thank you for that. Okay, I'll see you later. <laughs> Thank you for those few minutes. <laughs> and now you can see he was one of my major reasons to want to stay alive. And now you see. Now Never you know give why. up. <laughs> Is that what he said? <laughs> see, that's what he said. I asked him for advice for the audience. What would be the advice that he would want to give to people? And he said, never give up. Wow. <laughs> well, then I, then I have nothing else to say after that, I guess. <laughs> Well, well, I do have a couple more questions for you. And one of those questions would be, would you share with us what ideally the 60 minutes, the first 60 minutes of your day looks like? Okay. <clears throat> the first 60 minutes of my day, the very first, first, first 60 minutes of my day. Yeah. <clears throat> as soon as I wake up, as soon as I wake up and my eyes are open, I say a prayer and I'll share it with you. The prayer is, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me another day to live. And let me do the best I can to fulfill your will with the gifts you've given me. And please protect all my friends, all my family, and myself from all danger, sickness, and evil. Amen. Amen. That's how every morning starts. And that's how every morning, how, <laughs> that's how every day ends as a thank you. And then once I do that, I have a very, very small inner circle of trusted friends. And I'll share the first few minutes of my day with these inner circle friends why because they're important to me and the best gift you could ever give someone is your time because your time can never be replaced and i always spend time with them before my work day starts before i get busy being busy or being productive and fulfilling the mission 
because I need to remind myself how I got to where I am today. But I also need to remind them that you guys made a difference in someone's life, mine. And because of that, who knows who we're reaching? I say who we're reaching. Yes, it's my face on camera. Yes, it's my name on the blog. But it's we. You help uplift and esteem me. You help send me out in the world. You help sharpen my sword. And because of that, I have the shield and I do everything I can to protect all of us as I spend my days. And that's how I may usually spend my first 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I wake up. It's time to fix the bedhead because believe me, it doesn't take much to make this guy look ugly in the morning. It's all <laughs> over the place. <laughs> and then I got to get ready, comb it, fix it, start my day, get ready for camera and do all my online consultations with my clients through Zoom, Facebook chat or FaceTime. And mm -hmm. that's how I spend my days. But that's my very first hour. I thank God for letting me stay. I thank him for giving me the tools. And I promise that I will use the gifts that he gave me. And then after I do that, I spend time with my trusted inner circle, who I love dearly, who I know love me just the same way. And then once my cup is full and their cup is full, I'm ready to help everybody else on the planet. What a beautiful day to start. You know, I was like, as you were speaking, I was imagining, oh, if I was still coaching skating, and you are standing right by the side, and we'll do this together. <laughs> it's power. And just power in, in that. And I truly feel the power of a coach that you are. Because today there are a lot of people that call themselves coaches, but don't actually have any business of being called coaches. They don't know what true coaching is about. But a coach of an athlete, you're like a backbone of these of these people. They you're like their pillar that they rely on. It's it's so huge and so powerful. And I can totally see you being the pillar that others rely on. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, and, and and you know, Sophia, you see in me what is definitely already in you. For sure. <laughs> I take it. <laughs> thank you for thank you for that. You know, ladies and gentlemen, you know, my story is nothing compared to hers. Uh, one no, day, no, no. one day I'll have her on my no, show. No, no, but no. her story is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> my story is nothing compared to yours. I had it easy. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. So we are we Sophia and I are we're we're two birds of a two birds of a feather that flock together. And somehow the world got us together to share and combine our experiences. But most importantly, we love the people that we work with. We love the people that we work with. And I think that's why they stick around us. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. 100 percent And I would have my signature question to you. Imagine that your name changed today and you are no longer called Nelson and you have to choose a new name out of these four, success, trust, courage, or passion. Which of these names would you choose and what would change in your life as a result? Okay, what are the four choices again? That would be success, courage, trust, or passion. It's an easy for you. Courage, success, trust, or passion. I would say passion because you have to be on fire every day for the cause and the mission because obstacles will show up to the right and to the left. Things will show up to knock you down. And you always have to find a way to get back up. You have to bend and not break. I see myself walking through the field, being shot at with arrows, but breaking them off. <laughs> keep walking. Another arrow, but keep going from point A to point B. Because it's important for me to get to that end destination. Not for me. So 
everybody can believe that it's possible. Mm. Well, I would invite the audience to choose one of these words and maybe make that a word of your, the word for your next year. If that became a word for the year, how would your year go by if you created that intention of stepping in and embodying that quality? How would your year shape in a different way, for example? How, how mine would? Well, if you, yeah, sure, yeah. How oh, would? oh that's, that's easy. <laughs> you know how many times people have said, come on, Nels, that's not going to work. Oh, come on, Nelson. That is too difficult. Oh, come on, Nelson. Forget about that. Come with us to the bar. Have some beer and wings. Take care of that later. Come on. It's softball season. You're the pitcher. We need you. You know, all these things trying to pull you away from the purpose and the mission. They're called distractions. A distraction is anything that pulls you away from your mission. And hopefully my passion will remain larger than any distraction that mm. decides to pull me off path. And as long as I live with intention like that, that no distraction will pull me away from the mission, I'll be okay. You know, Safiya, I, I have a personal life code that I live by. And the code is God, life mission, family. And everything else is a distant fourth. And as long as those three are in, 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 in a safe place, I'll be okay. God, mission, family. I'm not talking about love, recreational love, lustful love, all of that. You have to make it up into family. It is love. And then love. you become a part of my world. It is love. Yes. Cheers to that. Yes. And this is something that... You, when you really look inward, when you're almost taken off this planet, then you have to say, what is it that's important to me? And as long as these things are important and they're all in check, nothing else will bother me. Because you know and I know there's a lot of things that bother a lot of people every day all the time. And I know what that feels like too. But one day I had to wake up and, and really take personal inventory and say, what is truly important to me? And make sure that that's in check. Everything else doesn't matter. And I can keep going. Because believe me, distractions will show up. They're coming. You just have to have your passion and purpose bigger than any distraction that comes your way. And today there are more distractions than we ever had before. Yes. For sure. Thank yes. you, Dr. Nelson, so much. This was such an amazing interview. I mean, truly the best. There couldn't be any better way to finish the year than having this interview with you. It's been truly, truly fantastic. And I want to ask you, well, you have the, your website is on camera, right? Is that where you want people to find you? Yes, yes. So then if there's anybody watching right now that is currently looking to get to that next place, your level of achievement, but don't know how to get there or feel kind of stuck, I invite you to grab your cell phone now, go to your email, punch in thepositivedrip.com, at hotmail.com, send me a message, and I'll send you a gift that will hopefully ignite your fire and get you moving in the direction that you deserve starting tomorrow. That is a gift. you got to give yourself a gift. If you love this interview like I did, you want to stay in this energy as much as you can. And you need to get this gift. That's what's going to keep you staying in and remembering these moments. And I have a gift for you as well. I'll send you a quality, one of the qualities you want to choose, success, passion, courage, or trust. And I'll send it to you in the in, in a, uh, email box so you can download that and charge your water in it so that every time you drink your water you rem you remember to step in and embody this quality for the year ahead so send send a message to dr nelson to get his gift send me a message to get your gift from me you can send a message on messenger or on facebook 
right? Type it in the comments below and we'll connect. And professionals, thank you so much for tuning in to our show, The Professionals on Air podcast, a podcast where we discuss how to walk, talk, live and grow authentically as professional in the 21st century. We are wrapping up the 21st year of the 21st century. Can you believe this? It's our last interview today for the year. If you want to be a featured guest next year, please send me a direct message to learn more about Dr. Nelson. Visit his website and send him a message to get your gift. The link is on camera right in front of you, and it's going to be in the comments as well. And we appreciate your comments and feedback and can't wait to see you next Wednesday, next year, where I will introduce you to Kurt Brackman, the Leadership Wellness and Transition Dynamic Specialist. And we're going to start an amazing year with a great interview next Wednesday, next year. As always, send us your questions. Ciao.